Hey guys, welcome to Hawk Moth and thanks for watching. What follows is a brief video about my research and about why it's important, and I would love to hear your feedback, any thoughts you have about what works with this video and what doesn't, what's effective in communicating science and what's not. Thanks, and I hope you like the video. So I think that the best way to think about my work is to imagine being a baby fish. If you've ever seen one of those nature documentaries that shows coral reef fish breeding, usually what you see is adult fish swooping up into the water column and spewing eggs and sperm. Those eggs and sperm meet in the water outside of the body of the fish and form this fertilized egg that then floats up and hatches on the surface of the ocean. And then that baby fish doesn't necessarily just settle back down onto the reef where it was born. Because the ocean doesn't have the same barriers that we have on land, that baby fish can drift thousands and thousands of miles and settle down on a reef literally half a world away from where it was born. So what that means is that sometimes reefs that are very far apart, reefs that don't obviously seem like they would be connected, are exchanging fish. And when we think about how to protect reefs, when we think about what is important in terms of making management decisions in marine conservation, we really want to know where fish are coming from and where they're going. At the moment in marine conservation, in the last five to ten years, there has been a real push for international collaboration and there has been a major emphasis on biodiversity. So we really want to protect marine areas that have a ton of species on them. And for coral reefs, the reefs with the most reef fishes, the most corals, the most invertebrates, are in a region of the Indo-Pacific Ocean, spanning from Indonesia down all the way out into Fiji. What we see is that as we move from Indonesia and the Philippines into Papua New Guinea, we have very, very diverse reefs. And then, from Papua New Guinea out east into Fiji, there's a dramatic drop-off, but the reefs are still really rich with life. So, what I want to know is, in that drop-off zone, in that region between Papua New Guinea and Fiji, which we call Melanesia, how are reefs connected? And why is it that some fish are able to get all the way out east to Fiji, well, other fish can only stay up in Indonesia and the Philippine region. You know, what is it that is separating these reefs and, and making it so that some are very easily able to exchange fish, while others really, really aren't able to make that exchange? The way that we ask these questions is by using DNA information. We can't follow around a bunch of baby fish as they drift across the world. So instead, we study their genes. To do this, our lab has sampled throughout Melanesia, using a combination of fieldwork and museum collections to study how fish move in space and time. In this political and cultural climate, where there is a tremendous interest in preserving marine biodiversity now, but we have limited money to do that, we have limited resources to do that, it's very important to make the most well-informed decisions that we can so that we don't waste our time or money on the wrong conservation measures. We want to be as informed as possible, and this project, this work, is part of how we understand exactly how to do that. 